Um, hello and welcome to HFS Unfiltered. This is the HFS video cast series dedicated to real and raw conversations about the future of enterprise operations. I am your host for this installment. I'm Elena Christopher. I'm a research leader for financial services and emerging technologies here at HFS. So what do we have in store for you today? Well, in honor of Women's History Month in the US, and of course, International Women's Day coming up on the, the 8th of March, I am very pleased to welcome a fabulous leader who happens to be female, Amalia Avramov. Uh, Amalia is a group vice president at Amdocs. Amalia, welcome. Please take a moment to briefly introduce yourself. Thank you, Elena, and hi, uh, everybody. Uh, so my name is Amalia Avramov, and as you said, Elena, I'm the group president. Uh, I'm a group president at Amdocs, and I'm responsible for building the strategy for new markets for Amdocs. Amdocs is a company that is mostly focused or used to focus on telecommunication and media, which is our main market, and we are now looking and evaluating new markets and new domains. Uh, as part of my career with Amdocs, I've been uh, running uh, some very large groups, uh, running mega programs uh, globally, uh, operations across the, across the world, migrations, merger and acquisitions. Uh, I think I've done mostly every role possibly can, that I can do in Amdocs. Uh, I, live in, I live in Israel uh, and I have three boys. I'm married to Eyal and I'm very, very happy to be here with you today. Wonderful. Thank you for that detail and background. We'll come back to, to some of that, um, that experience and tenure that you've accumulated with Amdocs over time. Uh, but for now, let's, let's do a little bit in the, uh, the, the way back machine. Uh, and what I mean by that is I always love when I'm, I'm talking to uh, interesting people like yourself, I always like to go back a little bit to determine and learn more about where did it actually all start. So tell us a little bit about uh, where you're from and what ultimately sparked your interest in, well, I suppose, ultimately technology? What, mm -hmm. what drew you to this field, Amalia? So, you know, uh, Elena, I actually started, uh, I started from a prestigious uh, technology program as part of mm -hmm. uh, my military service. I don't know if you know, but in, in Israel, all of us, all the Israelis have to go through a voluntary uh, military uh, service. But That's we right. can choose within that uh, the units we go to. And I chose to go to a very prestigious technology program. Mm -hmm. um, I did not know anything about technology back then, but I was young and I was ambitious. Uh, I came from a family of five sisters and two brothers. And my mother was laser focused on providing us all education and coaching us to be independent mm -hmm. in all that we do. So as a young woman, I had some instincts that pointed that this program would be a good move for me. Uh, so with a lot of unknown, I enrolled to the program and I graduated. And actually that was my door to the technology world. Of course, uh, later on, I graduated from university and I started mm. to work for different companies such as Amdocs. And now, uh, you know, as, as you know, now I'm uh, a senior in the company. Fabulous. I would say though that Elena, that, um, so I didn't start from, uh, you know, from passion to technology. I started from wanted to reach something unknown and, and explore it. But throughout my career, as it stemmed, I've seen really major innovation and cutting edge technologies. I think the one outstanding part that I want to maybe mention is the iPhone launch in 2007. Mm -hmm. I was in the US back then. Uh, I was part of AT&T, I was working with AT&T, and I don't know if you remember, but AT&T and Apple had like an exclusivity Exclusive, yeah. Yeah, around the iPhone launch. So I was on the AT&T side, and it was mind-blowing to me that you could take three existing pieces of, uh, you know, okay technologies. We had the iPod on one hand, we had the mobile phone back then, and there was an internet, the beginning of communication, and just combining the three to create the, the, the new device, the smartphone, that really changed the world as we know it today. Uh, I think that was when I understood the power of technology, not just in creating some cool solutions or even important solutions to processes of companies, but really to change uh, the, the life that we live in. So I think that actually created a lot of, you know, growing passion for me to new and uh, more advanced technology. 
Thank you, Amat. I really I, I appreciate and respect that story because I take your point. So often we talk about technology as it's sort of a, a conduit to, to profit and doing things more. I always say there's there's only a handful of real types of, of business benefits. There's top line in, impact, bottom line impact, customer experience, maybe regulatory experience. Uh, but you do, you have to take a broader purview. And, and I love that example because it really starts to, to point to the, the broad societal impact because you're absolutely right right something like the the smartphone uh, i have two kids myself and it's it's just a part of literally like the planet's daily life uh, so a really interesting example you can't live without it today I know, right? I, I joke with friends. I'm like, how did we used to navigate with paper maps? I mean, what a concept, right? Because we're so used to uh, all of our GPS. You know, I bought my husband a, a navigator system to hook in, in the car. And a year after that, it was just useless because, yeah. of, because of the smartphone. So there are so many things changed just because of that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk a bit. So I know you've mentioned you've been with a few different companies, but um, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think I did some simple math on this, but I think you've been with Amdocs for almost 28 years at this point, Amalia, which is, is amazing, particularly in this age of the so-called great resignation. I think that tenure alone is, is really quite compelling. Um, but I also think that there's always reasons why any individual uh, particularly like as you painted your your earlier younger self when you were just really wetting your appetite and interest in technology um, you have to stay if there are opportunities uh, and and I think that opportunities uh, they're either offered to you uh, or created in most cases probably a, a bit of both but tell us a little bit about why you you've maintained and, and built this fabulous tenure with op Amdocs and really back to that point I just made have your opportunities been offered or created, Amalia? Well, I think really that's the beauty of Amdocs. Uh, I feel that I was part of so many groundbreaking opportunities. Uh, we invented the core systems for telecom industry. I was part of the iPhone launch, as I just mentioned. Yeah. I was part of mergers and acquisitions, the 5G revolution that is happening today as we speak, that changes so many things in our life, the digital uh, transformations that are happening. I had the opportunity on a personal note to relocate and experience a different culture for 10 years of my life with my family. I think I visited almost every country on the face of earth. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that actually helped me, you know, as I've grown my career from a developer to the senior manager I am today, while I was building company systems, running uh, complex million dollar programs, uh, running, running business units and driving strategies. Now, I think you're asking a very good question, Elena, uh, whether I created the opportunities or I was given the opportunities. I, I would say that it was, uh, it was an evolution. Um, I think that many of the opportunities I did create myself. However, I would say that when I was younger, in a way, I was less assured of myself, of my strength. I didn't know yet where my power was, you know, was. And uh, in many cases, I was waiting for opportunities to be offered. I was waiting for managers to tell me, for my managers to tell me, you know, you're doing a good job. Maybe you can do more. I think I built the confidence as I grew in my career. And uh, as I've developed more and more, I've built more and more confidence. And I can tell you that at least in the last, I don't know, 10, 12 years, I am driving my opportunities. I'm actually uh, seeking them and sometimes even inventing them within the company. As an example, uh, about seven years ago, I was leading mega projects as part of what we call MDOCS delivery. And I decided that it's time for me to make a change. And that was new to me to come and decide for myself and not wait for somebody to offer me that. And I then had a very serious discussion with my manager back then and we decided together that we will go and search for uh, different opportunities for me. And soon enough, we decided to acquire Converse. Um, and uh, immediately I was assigned to lead that acquisition, the integration. And basically I actually led Converse within Amdoc. So I sort of ran a company within a company. I was a beautiful role for me because it was like a general man, my first general manager role where I really managed end to end uh, a company. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I think it also helped me 
move to where I am today, which is strategically developing, you know, the next the next areas for MDOC. So each step, you know, was the next was a, a built on on the previous step. And today I am capable, of course, and I'm doing that, coming and demanding or inventing in many cases the next step for me and for MDOCs in many cases. And I, and I'm sure as part of that, because uh, as as I've come to know you as a leader and as I've observed of really great leaders uh, in in many fields, is also taking the opportunity to to bring people on that journey with you, giving the same type of helping to make and help others realize their potential for realizing opportunities. Uh, thank you for that detail, and we'll sort of. I always like to, when we hear something I think of as particularly insightful and perhaps relevant to our listening audience, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of just point to that simple theme, which is, uh, it may not be that um, um, you, you always realize your potential and you really fight for those opportunities, particularly when you're, you're young or early in your career. Uh, but I, I like the, the core message that came through in your response there, which is that's always something that uh, you should have confidence, you should believe in yourself and you should work towards that. Uh, but it is also something that I think it's very natural to, to blossom over time, uh, yeah. but always maintain that confidence. So I appreciate that. Um, I want to pivot a little bit and talk a little bit more about, because uh, we have a great opportunity to understand a little bit more about Amdocs and some of the things, honestly, I think that are, are changing and, and growing at Amdocs. In your introduction, Amalia, you described Amdocs, and it's honestly how I think reputationally of Amdocs in the marketplace as a provider of products and services um, specifically to the communication and media sectors. That's where I've come to, to know you best, if you will. And I will just make a comment there. I've observed, it seems, that perhaps the technology element is amplified and the services element um, is downplayed. I'd love maybe for you to respond to that just about sort of the balance of what it is that Amdocs actually does. Uh, and then we'll come on and talk a little bit about uh, some of the new things that you're doing, particularly around industry expansion. Yep. yep. So, so I think you're right in the sense that, um, look, I, Amdocs uh, is a technology company, but we have a very unique model. I don't think many companies have that model where uh, we call it actually product product-led services, mm -hmm. because on one hand, we have our products, which we make sure that are the high, you know, cutting edge technologies uh, and provide the right functions with the right technology. On the other hand, we provide end-to-end -end highly sophisticated services ranging for, from advising customers on uh, business and technology strategies to design, to implementation, DevSecOps, which is the new trend, you know, of uh, development through security and operations, uh, both around our products as well as around other uh, products in the ecosystem uh, in the IT that we work with. Uh, we also provide uh, expertise uh, in niche areas such as cloud, cloud migration, such as experience design uh, and, exp and digital journeys. So we do both. I think in many cases you see companies that today that either do products or they do services. And I think the fact that we have this combined approach, uh, we believe it's very unique. Our customers love it because they get like a, what we call an accountability model, an end-to-end -end accountability model, and they don't have to juggle between the product provider and the SI and you know where the problem is. So they get more accountability. I think it drives higher success rates at the end of the day. Uh, but I think to your point, for the market, it's a bit uh, more difficult to sort of, you know, categorize us in which box uh, to categorize us because we have this, this uh, unique mo model. So I guess it's stemming from that. Uh, we, do, we do do, like you said, a lot of uh, services from high end to implementation to training, as well as uh, producing products. Indeed. And just to put a fine point on it, Amalia, because there are many, particularly in the, the world of software, but I think it applies to all technology products, is that many tech firms offer services to support their products. The point that you're making is that it is Yes, certainly in support of Amdocs products, but you also have a whole services business that's much broader than just Amdocs techs, correct? 
Absolutely, yeah, like, like the experience design and experience transformation. We do that regardless of the products the customer have. And we help our customers, by the way, not just in the telecommunication uh, industry, we help our customers transform their experiences. Like we are helping now a company in, in Seattle to uh, as they launch, um, uh, you know, the Tesla of motorcycles, that's how they call themselves. So we help them how to position themselves, how to create the brand how to do the go-to markets. Uh, so that's type. That's one type of product, of uh, services we have. Uh, on, a, on the other hand, we help companies migrate their uh, ITs to the cloud and create a cloud blueprint. We help many financial services institutes and many banks as they think through that uh, journey. And we, and we are advising them how to do that and how to do the journey there on the cloud. Uh, and that's, again, regardless of the products that they have underneath the hood. So definitely we do both. Got it. Thank you. Thank you for that. I think very important clarification there. Uh, and it's actually a perfect segue into something that I would want to talk with you a bit about, uh, which is something I tend to refer to as, as sort of interesting cross-pollination trends across industries. As you noted, Amdocs has typically and historically been a specialist in communication and media sectors. But just as you articulated, Amalia, you're doing all sorts of things that are bringing you into other industry domains. Uh, and I believe this is something that you're spending a lot of your time working on right now, which is actively looking at and evaluating what other industries that, that the, the built upon Amdocs expertise that's accrued over time, how that can be best leveraged to serve other sectors. But talk to us a little bit about what's going on with this industry expansion for Amdocs, please. Yep, absolutely. So indeed, this is my uh, focus now as I'm building the, you know, the new domain for us. Uh, and what we, uh, we've gone through a very deep uh, strategic process in the last I would say 14 months, and we looked at uh, many different industries. As we know, there's a huge disruption today, post COVID, the digital era on almost every domain in our life. Um, and so we, uh, we looked at uh, the different domains and what we've seen, especially in the financial services industry, um, that this industry is uh, going, as you know, Elena, for sure, it's going through uh, quite a few disruption uh, from open banking, banking as a service, digital loans, digital payments, crypto, um, a lot, a lot of changes. The regulation is changing and, uh, and the fintechs are coming like on a daily basis. There's new fintechs dealing with all kinds of financial uh, uh, products and assets. Actually, also many other industries want to start selling financial products like, uh, you know, uh, telecommunications uh, already yeah, does, right? Communication providers, they, they, they really want to sell maybe loans to their customers, maybe money exchange between countries as they roam. There's, all, there's, there's a convergence actually between the industries that we see. And, and we believe that uh, MDocs can bring through our technology, uh, through our technologies, through our DNA, through our ability to deal with complex and large enterprises, uh, we can help uh, the financial services uh, industry uh, as they go through this journey. By the way, many of the banks now are starting the journey to the cloud, which is also an area that we have a lot of experience now as because we've done it with many of our telecoms as well and we do it with banks. So when we look at the financial uh, services industry at banks and, and financial services institutes, uh, we've seen a lot of synergy and a lot of right to play for us. So in, in such a way that we can help the industry to progress and to go through these digital journeys, cloud journeys, experiences, uh, changes, open API, open banking, et cetera. And that's the domain that I'm now uh, responsible for. We're starting to build, uh, we, we have started to build a, a new unit, the banking unit, mm -hmm. and we're starting to explore. We have already some offering, like I mentioned, the cloud and the experience design, yeah. uh, but we are looking at also expanding uh, our offerings and, and actually building a portfolio of products and services uh, into this industry with a lot of synergies to what we're doing today in the telecom. Super. I very much look forward to seeing that type of uh, capability continue to expand. And I like some of the, you used a, a key phrase there that I just want to underscore, which is this concept of right to play. Um, it is, it's definitely something that I, I you you I hear that concept in business very often. Uh, but it's this idea that uh, well, of, of course, you have something as a firm to to offer 
uh, the financial services sector and other sectors because you have such deep experience and such technology background and such services heft and expertise. And so um, I think that we all tend to suffer from the concept of, well, unless you have 20 years of experience doing this, then there, there's no place for you here, but there it couldn't be further than the truth. The pace of technology, literally, someone said this to me the other day and I've been pondering it. Today is the slowest the pace of technology will be for the rest of our lives, right? So what you <laughs> need is you need partners that can help you get there and if you've got relevant expertise then then I think it has to be open for consideration any Amalia do you want to put a stake in the ground about of all of the different types of uh, technologies and work that Amdocs is doing to really drive change and innovation uh, in the various markets that you serve um, any particular ones that you want to call out is, is something that you've just been delighted to be part of, or even just part of a company that, that that's pursuing s such uh, developments? Anything to name check there? You mean as far as innovations and 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 uh, it could be it could be technology, it could be initiatives within Amdocs, just anything that you're particularly proud of that the firm is working on or has even launched at this point that's yeah. really making a difference in terms of change and helping to drive innovation. Yeah, so it's 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 funny that you ask it because to, this week, as you know, was uh, the Mobile World Congress uh, yeah. event in uh, in Barcelona. And we did launch this week uh, our new suite. We call it CES 22. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's unique about this suite is that it's a customer experience uh, platform that is built through low code, no code. Uh, and it includes commerce, embedded artificial intelligence, machine learning. And we've, we've gone, it, it's amazing to see, even for ourselves, we're very proud to see it because, you know, we, we, uh, started the journey 35 years ago and and we're able today to take this industry that uh, we're so familiar with and move and help them move to the latest and greatest technologies with the uh, most flexibility they can get and to your point Elena tomorrow mm -hmm. is going to be faster than today because yeah. every day is faster than yesterday and by going through this low code no code and and the special platforms and cloud and machine learning we are enabling our customers and, and the industries to accelerate uh, exactly to go faster the day, uh, day after day through our technologies. I think one more thing we're doing on top of that, because it, it was indeed a, a very important launch this week, but on top mm -hmm. of that, we in MDocs, what we do, we have an ecosystem that cultivates out of the box thinking. For example, uh, we've established a Gen Z lab because we know that a lot of the, uh, you know, the young people that come to work with us, they're interested in bringing their own ideas. They're interested in, in, in creating new things, not necessarily what, you know, the manager will tell them to do. So we've mm -hmm. created a lab where they can uh, work and sit and develop and experiment and then present, you know, some of their products and, and potentially get our help in funding and, and, and expanding mm -hmm. that. So it's a win-win because they get to innovate and, you know, and we get a lot of new ideas from uh, an informal channels. We also have our hackathons. Um, I don't know if you know, but MDocs actually has a venture capital where we invest in startups. Uh, where we, you know, we look at startups that are really like going places far from where we are because we want to create uh, cross pollination, as you said, and cultivate some thinking and understand where the world is going. So we're actually investing uh, in different uh, startups in the in the domain of uh, autonomous cars, in some in the domain of financial of fintechs, uh, in the domains of ag agriculture, uh, different domains, really not just. Uh, not just telco, or not just financial services. So, you know, in a way, I think what the beauty of, I hope the beauty of what we're doing, and I think it's it's paying off, is that on top of the day-to-day -day work, which is, you know, heavy lifting projects, uh, core systems in customers with the highly regulated environments, we are also all the time seeking for uh, the, the things that are happening around that, for new things, for innovation, uh, for inclusion, for, uh, you know, for uh, un, uh, informal uh, cross-pollination across almost all domains we do. Yeah, it's always a lot. It's interesting because I know as a, um, a provider, uh, a vendor in the marketplace of technology and services, you're always thinking how you can 
um, help your clients run their business, help them innovate their businesses. But you too are Amdocs, of course, is an enterprise um, in its own right. So you, of course, have to run the business and innovate the business. So part of what I just heard in that response was a variety of ways where you're, yes, you're, you're continuing to forge ahead to the future, but also making sure that you've got a, a and you must have, quite frankly, a multifaceted approach for how you can drive that innovation uh, in, into yeah. Amdocs, aside from just the, the same old typical product product development cycles. You have to have new ways, you have to appeal to new markets, and you've got to bring a whole cadre of folks of, of, of varying creeds, um, capabilities, um, age, et cetera, along for the ride, because they, they inform the journey. Um, with that, I want to bridge over to talk a little bit about, so uh, International Women's Day is coming up on the, the 8th of March. Um, the theme this year is break the bias. My understanding of, I think it's somewhat self-explanatory, but um, the vision, because they always, um, the uh, International Women's Day group, they put out some nice guidance on what that stands for, but it's, they ask us to imagine uh, a gender equal wor world free of bias, stereotypes, and discrimination that's diverse, a world that's diverse, equitable, uh, and inclusive, which I think is, of course, a, a magnificent um, vision. And, and I wish I didn't have to refer to it as a vision, quite frankly. Uh, but I, I like you, as we've been talking about technology and innovation, um, I just like any of your thoughts on uh, what it's meant to you to be a woman in IT or a woman in technology. Yeah, so, you know, I, I always, I, I think I don't, usually I don't think myself as a woman in IT, but in general, I'm thinking by, I'm thinking about, you know, I'm a professional person. Uh, and in general, I, I feel that I was able to do and to reach where I reached because I was good at what I was doing because I delivered excellent results. Uh, not because I'm a woman or, or because I need to get it because I'm a woman. Um, however, um, I do see uh, if you, you know, I do see that there's some unconscious bias still uh, in and, and some gaps that are created because of that. Um, by the way, uh, the more you, you know, the more you grow, the more I see it. So I think uh, when also statistically you see that when you look at juniors, we're almost 50 50 when you look at the, even in technology, junior programmers, there's close to 50% uh, are women or, you know, between 40 to 50%. As we uh, grow and become more and more senior, the, the percentages are going down to 40 to 30, even to less than 20 in, in uh, when you look at CEOs of companies or, uh, or investment uh, leaders of investment companies. So something is happening down the road. I think it's a combination of choices that we as women take which is you know, totally legitimate, but sometimes I think it's also some norms that we follow and don't allow ourselves to really follow our dreams. Um, and on the other hand, I think there is some still, some bias that needs to be addressed. As, and as you said, the vision is beautiful. The reality is not, is not yet there. And I have to say, while I'm a very optimistic person, uh, the last two years actually took us uh, backwards um you know the the statistics show that uh, um we almost lost a couple of decades just in the last two years because of covid because the pandemic created actually expanded the gap we had a very nice journey and then covid came and uh, with working from home with no school and needing to take care of children uh in many cases the choice was for the woman to you know to give up or to uh, downplay her career and and actually the gap increased in the last two years and we've seen it globally across many many different countries and I think it's a call for action for for us and for everybody for the companies for men men want women to be more productive in in the workforce it's it's better you know it's better uh, spread of their uh, chores even at home and uh, I think we you know it is a call for action now Yep, 100%. Um, you're right. I think your points about the, the pandemic are really spot on. Um, a lot of just in the role of caregiver, uh, as well as because I do think there's something to it, what I'll call the great resignation logic of 
um, people really taking decisions of this job may not be worth my time to actually go to it. I'm going to, during this just time of complete global upheaval, I'm going to prioritize my family instead of the job that I don't love. Um, but you're right. I mean, I think some of that call to action that you refer to, Amalia, is getting helping to get women back into the, the workforce in roles that are good jobs. Uh, and I know it just as, as I read through statistics as easily as anyone else can, but we still see, um, certainly in America, very well-published statistics, but I know it's a global phenomenon as well, which is women getting paid less than men do, mm -hmm. uh, limited senior leadership. Uh, but that's also part of why, if you recall back to how I introduced you today, I said, I'm pleased to be talking to a great leader who just happens to be a woman. Because to your, your points there, um, I didn't choose to be a woman. I'm delighted every single day that I am. But that's yeah. just something that we're born with. What we do with it is, is what it's all about. I agree. I yeah. Totally agree. Great. Yeah, indeed. All right, Amalia. So let's wrap this up. And I'd love to close with what I call the lightning round. Uh, and we'll see if we can do a little uh, something fun here, but some quick fire questions. Um, let's start with one of my favorite topics, food. What's your favorite food? My favorite food is a really good uh, steak filet, especially in Texas. Okay, I love it. That's fabulous. Yes, they are delicious. All right, yes. favorite place in the world? My Okay, I have a few favorite places in the world, but I think my my... Currently, my most favorite place in the world is in the Maldives, underwater, actually oh, diving wow. and exploring the underwater world in the Maldives. It's okay, beautiful. I love that. Well, I'll follow beautiful. up with you on that one. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah, you need to come. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay. Um, do you have a, uh, what's your charity or your cause of choice that you'd like to put your, your time, uh, effort, and possibly financials behind as well? Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm actually participating in, uh, in the Rothschild Foundation. It's a special charity foundation where we dedicate, uh, very similar to the topics we discussed now, we, 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 we bring and we empower, power, we empower, we connect and we promote the edges of the society and help them through funds of education, through supporting systems so that they can afford education and become part of the society in a very meaningful mm -hmm. you know, role. And, and that really makes a difference to the full families, you know, to many families, but also to the society that we live in. So I'm part of that and I'm actually uh, putting a lot of effort in that. Wonderful, lovely to hear. Um, okay, back to technology. Uh, technology you think has the most potential, Amalia? Oh, okay. So I love technology, as we already established. Um, I think there's many technology trends now. Uh, if I have to pick one, I think the augmented reality, uh, which many people connect to gaming, but it's not gaming. The impact of augmented reality on our lives, I think, will be huge. If you think about augmented reality in medicine, in, in how we make procedures, in how we do agriculture, in how we do education, it will touch everything in our life. I think it will change the way our children uh, and our grandchildren will be educated and how they will consume all kinds of services in life. I think it's an amazing, you know, the, some, you might call it metaverse or, you know, there's all kinds of flavors of that. Uh, but definitely I believe that uh, this is coming. Yeah, absolutely. Time. Yes, yeah, so metaverse being the the I think major example of how we can see yeah. this being applied in action. But I agree with you one hundred percent. This goes so far beyond gaming. So far, yeah. Um, yeah, indeed. Okay, last but not least, to sort of thematically bring this all together, um, what's your best recommendation for women who want to be successful leaders in, in the technology space, or, or honestly, Amalia, their 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 space of choice? But it's given that choice. we're tech, yeah. yeah. I think my advice is simple. It's a simple rule that I follow. Think mm -hmm. big, aim high, and act bold. Yeah. Just that. That's wonderful. Uh, thank you for those words. I will say in spirit of, or in honor of International Women's Day, uh, they, they come out with a, a, a sort of a stance or a position each year, uh, but they literally have one this year, which is, this is the break the bias pose. Do you want to do it with me? Break the break bias. The bias. Uh, Amalia, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you today. Thank you for letting us uh, to learn a bit more about you, 
um, all the various interesting things you've done uh, in your life, some of the great discussions around the future of technology, uh, as well as how we can all work to, to truly break the bias. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Elena. It's been a pleasure.